Um, hello and welcome back. Uh, it was a Saturday, Warsaw. We were looking to return to winning ways in Scarbet League 2 um, as we take on League Scribblers Colchester so United away from home. Um, before I go any further on this week's match preview show, um, I'm pleased to say that I'm being, joy- uh, I'm being joined by Ryan uh, from Up the U's, making his second appearance on the channel this season. Uh, Ryan, first and foremost, uh, first and foremost, I really appreciate really appreciate you coming on um, this uh, this evening's show. Uh, but same same as always, same process in all these match previews. We are going to start this preview off by looking at the current League Two table going into this Saturday's um, League Two encounter. So going into uh, Saturday's game, uh, starting off with the host, which is of course Colchester United. You guys currently sit twenty third in League Two, uh, which is of course the second from bottom in Scarlet League Two. Uh, you couldn't play 35 games in League Two uh, so far this season, whilst picking up a total amount of 32 points in total. Um, and coming to this Saturday's game, you are uh, five games there to win. Um, it's a loss, a draw, a draw, a draw, and a loss going into Saturday's game for Colchester United. Um, however, for Warsaw, which is of course my team, Warsaw, uh, going into Saturday's game, we're currently sit eighth in League Two, uh, two points away from the playoffs. We played uh, 37 games in total, whilst picking up a total amount of uh, 55 uh, points in total and our recent five games in the league are of course uh, a win, a win, a win, a loss and a draw. Uh, so looking at the current League 2 table, Ryan, this Saturday's uh, League 2 encounter, uh, what would you say your overall thoughts are going into this Saturday's game? Well, I think the main thing, if the game actually goes ahead, um, we've not been in, I, I don't want to say we've not been in the best of forms, obviously, he just read off our last five games and the one thing that we didn't really hear and that was a win. Um, it's been a horrible time under the Cowleys. Um, it's been brilliant to see what they've been able to do on the pitch. Um, the way that we've been playing has been a lot better, but not having a natural goal scorer um, and still letting in some sort of sloppy goals, either defensive errors, goalkeeping errors or goals where you sort of just sit and watch it and you think like how has that gone in um and also some of the officiating we've had the past few games has been horrible i'm not one to blame the referees but in the barrow game the free kick that they got um which they scored their first goal in never in a million years a free kick you can see Harbottle will stick his leg out and you can see where the ball goes it's clear that he won the ball and that cole stockton tripped himself up but was given a free kick we had a penalty before that that wasn't given, which was a clear penalty. Um, we've had some decisions going against us. We've had some decisions. I can't really even say some decisions going for us because you, I, I just can't think of any. But yeah, not having a natural goal scorer in front of goal has been our key problem. The last time we played, we had Joe Taylor, and he was looking like the man. But in January, he got recalled back to... Um, I, to Luton and then Luton loaned him out to Lincoln and we just never replaced him. Um, yes, yeah, the Cowleys have done wonders on the pitch in terms of changing the way we play, but we're just not scoring the goals. And unfortunately at the moment, Forest Green are starting to get some results when we're not getting the results. And it's really starting to look like a horrible time to be a Colchester fan. These last 11 games are probably going to be some of the biggest games that I've seen in my 20-odd year span of, of uh, supporting culture. Yeah, 100% mate. And it's one of them things really was where once you're down there scrapping for every point you can get, you know, it seems to be. Um, nothing really it tends to go your way, really. I think Walsall are a prime example as well. We've been uh, we've been in your position so many times the last few years where um, you're scrapping for every point and, you know, refereeing decisions don't go your, don't go your way. Free kicks, penalties, so many different decisions don't go your way. Um, and that's what it is when you're down there. You know, it's just it's one of the things they didn't really so obviously going into that last game you'll be wanting to uh, really you know put three points on the board which you are currently in desperate need and uh, need of obviously haven't won a game uh also we say you've only won one game um under under danny crowley since uh he was appointed as head coach so not really you know the stats you would have wanted to hear once he was appointed as head coach so going into that last game obviously from a, from a coach's point of view you could argue that it's a must-win game for yourselves uh, but before we go any further on this week's preview, I wanted to talk a bit about the game as well on Saturday because obviously there's been a few rumours here and there saying the game might not go ahead on the weekend. Um, obviously, I think it was a, two pictures that were leaked from, I think it was a Colchester fan. He put yeah. two pictures on 
um, on X a couple of days ago. Obviously, two pictures were, uh, you know, the pictures of the Colchester pitch uh, in midweek, and it didn't look too, didn't look too great. Um, obviously, I've looked at the weather, you know, between now and Saturday. I don't think the rain is going to stop either. So it's touch and go whether the whether Saturday's game does go ahead. But I'm not going to sit here and talk about how poor Colchester's pitch is. I think Walsall's pitch um, isn't in, too, you know, isn't in. Uh, too much great condition here. Obviously, the Aston Villa women play there on a Sunday after Warsaw play there. So obviously, you could argue that's re- that's the reason why Warsaw's pitch hasn't been uh, too great this season. But um, in terms of going into Saturday's game, you know, is there any you know rumours from you or anything you've heard going into Saturday's game whether Saturday's game could potentially go ahead? To be honest, you you've already said it. Um, the chap that put the photos up, Matt Baldwin. Um, when you actually look at the pitch, it is an absolute shocking pitch. Um, you look at Bradford, they're having similar sort of problems with the rain up, up in their sort of uh, parks, but I've never known, So I was talking to my dad about this today, I've never known so many games for coaches to be called off for a waterlogged pitch. Um, Robbie Cowley come out and, um, Robbie Cowling, sorry, always get them mixed up, came out and said that the uh, building development that we're doing next to the pitch, they're building like a hotel and a cinema and business pieces like that, that has no effect with the drainage of the pitch. But before that was being built, we never had this sort of problem. We've now found out that the pitch is built on a clay surface, so it doesn't drain as well as what sort of maybe some other pitches do. Um, our first game of the season at home for Swindon was called off. Yes, that was tremendous rainfall that we had from about 12 o'clock onwards. Um, and the pitch was in an absolute state. But when you look at them photos that Matt put on Twitter, um, it does not look good. And unfortunately, as you said, the weather tomorrow meant to rain, I think, all day tomorrow. It's not meant to be heavy rain, but it's meant to be light rain. Um, it's meant to be clear Saturday. Um, but it's then meant to rain on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, I think, next week. So on Tuesday night, we've got the Essex Senior Cup final being played at the ground. If that goes ahead, that's going to make the pitch even worse. So that might get postponed. But the problem is we've now got, I think, 11 games to play in I think like seven weeks or something like that. So if we get more and more games postponed, we're going to be running out of Tuesday nights. We're going to be running out of times to rearrange the fixtures. And the EFL come out and say, <coughs> and say you have to get every single game played before your last game of the season. Um, <coughs> we're in big trouble because we're running out of time. We may, we may have to play... Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and there's it's a two-headed coin. You can you can do that. We can play the eleven games in a very short amount of time and get some really nice momentum and start to build something. But also in them eleven games, if you if we get any more injuries to any more key players, we're in a really really bad bad way. Um, so it is a double head uh, double headed sword. All I would say to every Walsall fan is to just keep an eye on the weather forecast for Essex um, because if there is too much rain then the game would potentially get called off I hope that it's not down to a pitch inspection early Saturday morning it was like that last week and there was still still some moans and groans from uh, Stockport fans it was called off about two hours after they potentially set off so it's not it's bad that it was called off after that people had left, but it's not like they got to the ground and then had to turn around and go back. So that like what happened with um, Don- some Doncaster fans and some Swindon. The Swindon game was called off, I think, 15 minutes before kickoff. So predominantly everyone was in the ground and then got told, yeah, it's not going to happen, see you later. So I would, I would hope that if the rain is heavy for tomorrow, we can get a pitch inspection in, hopefully tomorrow, to then determine whether the game is playable or not. But... But yeah, going back to them pictures, it doesn't look good because it look it looks like it's all down the touch side on the east stand, but it does look like it's starting to go towards the penalty box and they're key areas that the refs check straight away and if they're waterlogged then he'll call the game off. So I'm cr- I'm crossing my fingers. The what the last game was called off from a local EFL official. So I think we've gone to the EFL and found a referee that's local to Colchester so we can get games called off potentially a little bit sooner, but if this gets called off as well and it's another game we've got to play with the teams, the the form Forest Green are in, if they get another win at the the weekend, we don't play again, that's going to be more points they are above us. And 
the, the further away they get, the bleaker it looks for us. So I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping that it doesn't rain too much and we can actually get a game because it feels like months since I've been at the ground to watch a game of football. Yeah, 100%, mate. And, you know, like all those Wolves fans, we're also keeping our fingers crossed. Saturday's game does, of course, go ahead. Um, but like you said, you know, I, I don't mind if the game gets called off Saturday as long as, you know, Colchester put a statement out early enough so Wolves fans don't have to um, obviously, if, you know, for example, if there was to call it off, um, you know, during what should we say, eleven, twelve o'clock on Saturday, on Saturday morning, when Walsall fans would have already started to travel up to Colchester, and um, it's a bit of a you know poor time to call it off. So if they are going to call it off, uh, potentially tomorrow afternoon or early early hours Saturday morning, uh, would be uh, would be an ideal time for it to be called off. But again, not thinking that way. Hopefully, Saturday's game goes ahead. All fingers crossed. Uh, but enough about that. Let's actually talk about Saturday's game. Um, in terms of, you know, Colchester United you know, and your current team going into Saturday's game. So looking at your current team, um, obviously you've got a former Warsaw player you saw not long ago in Connor Wilkinson. Um, I see a lot of Warsaw fans will know a lot about him going into Saturday's game. But a main man that in which I've picked out, um, which I did actually pick out early on in the season, of course, Noah Chilvers, and obviously plays in that sense midfield role, who I definitely think is the one to watch going into Saturday's game. Uh, but from a, you know, from your point of view, Ryan, who would you say you're one to watch this for any Warsaw fans uh, to look out for on Saturday against Colchester United? It's very interesting you say Noah Chilvers because I think some Colu fans in his current form would go, yeah, I agree. A lot of Colu fans would go, if that's who Warsaw are worried about, then we might actually nick a win. Chilvers, unfortunately, runs hot and cold. Um, we normally seem to get three types of Noah Chilvers. We get the uh, Noah Chilvers that sort of goes missing in games. We get the Noah Chilvers that can't pass a ball, can't shoot, can't really do anything and all the fans don't like. Um, and then we get the Noah Chilvers where it's like, calm down Noah or you're going to be sold for good money and we don't want to lose you. We've had the can't pass, can't shoot, can't dribble and we've had the sort of Noah, what he's like, the going missing Noah. He is starting to get a little bit better, which is good. Um, he's starting to play in a slightly different role, I believe, under uh, the Cowleys. The one I would say to watch out for at the moment would probably be it depends what we play. So we'll, we'll probably be playing a 4 2 3 1 formation. Um, but we have a sort of like little diamond of Arthur Reed, Alistair Smith, and Cam McGeehan. So one of them three would be the ones that I would possibly look out for. Arthur Reed's going to be the one that pulls the strings and dictates the play. And to be honest, everything's probably going to go through Arthur Reed. Uh, Alistair Smith is just a big, tall defensive midfielder that just is everywhere. He covers every blade of grass. Um, so he'll be one that he'll look to get the ball, look to go for the attack, look to drop back. Cam McGee, and he's our, I think he is now our top goal scorer. Um, he's a bit of a hothead, but he does look like potentially the one to look out for. So I'd say one of them three, but of the three, I'd probably say Arthur Reid. He will be the one that, like I say, all of our play will go through. It will start with him, and sometimes it finishes with him. Um, but you mentioned, obviously, Connor Wilkinson. When we signed him, I think it's from Motherwell, some of the fans were like, how have we got that much money for him? Good luck, Colchester. Like, you can have him sort of thing. And to be honest, when he's played for us, he's been brilliant. He has been really, really good. He's quite a tall player. I think he's about 6'1", six, 6'2". Six, but when he gets the ball, he's very uh, gracious on the ball. He takes the first game at home, he got the ball and he just took players on and was like, give me the ball. I want to score. I want to try and score. And his first, in his first game... Everyone thought he did score the winner, but he'd come off Brad Hoven. But he does look like a player that could help us turn the season around a little bit. Unfortunately, he's, uh, I think he's picked up an injury, which is the thing that happens with most Cole U players at the moment. They seem to start to play very well, and then they pick up an injury. Um, but Connor Wilson does look like he could be he could be a player that could be very vital for us if we can get him back before the end of the season. Yeah, going back to the point you said there about, um, about Noah Chilvers, um, it's, it's, as you were saying, it's very similar to the play in which we've got in Isaac Hutchinson currently. Um, because I think Isaac Hutchinson obviously plays centre midfield for Warsaw. Um, on his day, you know, I could say to you now he's a, you know, a high table championship player, and he is. He's a championship player on his day. 
um, on the ball. Um, you know, he's he's really comfortable on you know on the ball. Um, obviously, he loves to get his shot off here and there. Um, and obviously, Walsall's leading goal scorer. I think he's got 13 goals from playing centre midfield this season, which is unbelievable from a centre midfielder. Uh, I think that's the most uh, goals we've had from a centre midfielder in so many years. So, you know, I take my attitude to him in that instance. But if you link it back to his game last Saturday against Forest Green Rovers, um, if he was to watch the game, you wouldn't even think he was on the pitch. Um, and it's one of them things where he's just far too inconsistent. Um, you know, a couple of games there, you'll think to yourself, bloody hell, he's, a, he's an unbelievable play, but one bit you'll think, um, you know, he's nowhere near good enough league too. So it's just that consistency with all the in this season that we're yet to see. Um, but I'd like to say on his day, he's a, he's a championship player, you know, and I think a lot of Warsaw fans would agree. Um, but like I said there, if, you know, if he's, he's if he was having an off game, um, like for example, if he was having an off game Saturday, he wouldn't even think he was on the pitch. So fingers crossed he performs on Saturday and hopefully chips him with the goal as well, which he hasn't scored in quite a few games. So hopefully he cut the scores against yourselves on Saturday. Um, even though I haven't expected a tough game, obviously you guys are going to be fighting for every point you can get. Obviously you're going to be fighting on off the ball on Saturday. So um, you'll be wanting to look for, uh, you'll be obviously going to be looking, uh, looking to get all three points against Wolves. So I am expecting a very tough game against Colchester on the weekend. Um, but of course, Noah Chilvers, like you said there, um, obviously a player in which on his day, like you said, you know, can be a, um, you know, a very uh, very good player in League 2 and obviously he can cause Walsall all sorts of problems um, on his day if he performs against Walsall on Saturday. Um, but a point I wanted to mention this week's preview, which is going to probably be the penultimate point of this week's match, proves, of course, talking about Colchester's season as a whole week, because obviously it's not been the season that you Colchester fans would have so much hoped for. Um, I mean, at the start of the season, you know, it's one of them things where you, like, expectations are high we're looking forward to this season, but looking at where you are on the table, there's nothing really to be excited about as a as a Colchester fan currently. But looking at your current stats this season, uh, you've played uh, 16 games at home and 19 games away. You've won four at home and four away, drew five at home and three away. Obviously lost seven at home and lost 12 away. Um, so going back to the start of the season, Ryan, um, as a Colchester fan, uh, what were the overall expectations going into the going into this season? Obviously. Is this, you know, the sort of position which, in which, as a coaches fan, you were expecting, and um, what you were expecting a lot more as a coaches to fan at the start of the season? It's interesting you mentioned the start of the season because if if at the start of the season that I'd done a predictions video under Ben Garner with the players that we brought in, we brought in a lot of players that Ben Garner knew and knew how they played. Manny Egbo. Um, Zach Mitchell, Elsie and Darlow, they were three players that were Garner's signings. He, he sort of came to the games, saw the areas in which we needed to improve and brought in these three players. Then we brought in obviously the lone players, Owen Goodman, Joe Taylor, uh, we had Mario Bandera at the time as well. So we brought in a lot of players that Garner wanted. It didn't work out for Garner. Me personally, I'm still under the impression that he was let go way too soon. I think he should have been given more time. Um, you look back on the last three or four years, the position we're in is the same position we were in three, four years ago. Um, I think the biggest downfall of our season has to be when Matthew Everington was in charge. He was in charge for way too long than he deserved to be. Um, I think he had nine games in a row where he was unbeaten, but he was in charge for what, been like 13 games, which I think Garner lost four games in a row, won his last game, and then was let go. But then when we got the Cowleys, it was then clear to see that, that Robbie Cowling was waiting for the Cowleys to become available. So we think that when they got um, when they got sacked from Portsmouth, they had to wait a year until they could get a new club. And the day after, I think the year was on the 2nd of January, and on the 3rd of January, they were then appointed as the culture managers. So that's what I think Robbie was holding out for. But we held on to Everington for way too long. And I think that's what the downfall of our season has been was the sort of two, three months under Everington because it was under caretaker Everington. It was brilliant. I think we won, I think we had five games under him as caretaker and we won four of them. So it was like, do you know what? Manny Everington might know what he's doing. But then he got the job permanently and it just tanked. And the Cowleys, like, so they've come in and they've done an amazing job, but boy, did they have an uphill an uphill battle. Um, all Colchester fans would know when I say this, 
they were standing at the bottom of North Hill and looked up and was like, that's that's quite a steep hill to climb. Um, but yeah, I, I think it definitely, that at the start of the season, I think if someone said to me, you're going to be in a relegation battle, I'd go, well, over the last four years, yeah, probably. But when you looked at the team and you looked at the manager of Ghana, I'd be like, no, do you know what? Maybe like a mid-table finish is where we would be. But I, being in a relegation battle doesn't su- surprise me. But actually now being potentially the team that's going to get relegated, that does surprise me. I didn't think we would be in this battle. And to be honest now, the way Grimsby are playing, for me personally, it's between us, Sutton and Forest Green Rovers. And at the moment... Forest Green are doing that, and we're doing that. So it's not looking good. Yeah, and it's just one of the things, really, mate, where you've just got to, um, you know, you've just got to watch it up, really, between the end of the season. But looking at the League Two table, <clears throat> Colchester currently sit twenty uh, third in League Two. You're currently one, uh, yeah, one point from safety away from Forest Green Rovers. So it's just that fine margin between you and Forest Green Rovers. But like you said, there, Forest Green Rovers at the moment seem to be in that, you know, good run of form at the right time. Obviously, they've got two consecutive wins under their belt. One, obviously, coming against Warsaw last weekend. Um, so, I think a win for yourselves on Saturday against Warsaw would be a huge boost for yourselves. And if Forest Green was to lose you, find yourselves at the relegation zone. So, you just need to find that level of consistency between now and the end of the season. Uh, obviously, getting points here and there away from home is huge. And picking up as many three points as you can at home, that would be, uh, I think that would be your target between now and the end of the season to, to try and just get out that relegation zone because once you don't once you're in that relegation zone it's really hard to get out of in any league really and Warsaw uh, we've been there we've been in that situation so many times and it's so hard to get out the relegation zone especially when you're in there um so don't need to set those game you know yourselves are going to be wanting to put bodies on the line and just fight for every fight for every ball on the weekend which you know if it was a if I was in your position if I was a coach I'd be wanting the same thing as well um, but of course, that does, of course, bring us to the end of this week's match preview. Ryan, I really do appreciate you taking your time out to come on uh, this evening's show. Um, once again, like we said earlier, fingers crossed the game goes in on, on the weekend. Uh, fingers crossed. Uh, but of course, to end the video off, as always, Ryan, your score prediction for Saturday's game. I'm, I'm going to back I'm going to back the boys. I'm going to back the fact that we've not been there for a while. I'm going to back the fact that the fans are going to be right behind everyone. I'm going to go for a Cole you win. Uh, I'll let Walsall score a goal, but I'm going to go for a 3-1 Cole you win. In all fairness, I'm not feeling too confident going into that game from a Walsall point of view. As much as a lot of Walsall fans are saying, um, oh, this is going to be an easy one on Saturday. I don't think it's going to be an easy game on Saturday at all. Um, obviously, looking at the League 2 table, Walsall obviously the clear favourites going into the weekend's game. But these are the type of games in which Walsall seem to seemed to struggle in, which is a prime example last week against Forest Green Rovers. We didn't even turn up against Forest Green Rovers. So I'm a, kind of expecting the same thing on the weekend. Um, obviously, the pitch might not go in our favour. Um, you guys obviously played on that pitch, you know, a lot more, well, obviously, a lot more times than Warsaw this season. So you're obviously um, going to um, adapt to the pitch a lot better than Warsaw. So I wouldn't be surprised if you come away with all three points in the weekend. But if Warsaw pick up three points in the weekend, we do, of course, find ourselves back in that playoff pack. Um, it might be a huge three points of Walsall if he was, to, if he was of course, to secure them on the weekend. Uh, but overall, it's all pretty much ensured for what looks to be a very entertaining game of football on the weekend. Um, I won't be making the trip up to Colchester on the weekend, obviously, due to all the plans, but I will be watching the game and I'll follow as usual. So um, I will be watching the game on the weekend. Uh, but safe trip or uh, up to all Walsall fans making the journey on Saturday and hopefully the game goes ahead like we've said numerous times on this, on this week's match preview show. Uh, but of course, that does, of course, bring us to the end of this week's match preview. But we'll see you on Saturday for the match reaction of Colchester United versus Warsaw. But until then, and as always, up the Saddlers.